How many of you people, um, you get my pardon the letter? Hold your hand up. Anybody here? Get, oh, look at the people. Play with. Thank you for doing that. I'm going to preach the theme. I very seldom get a chance to preach the theme that God gave me for 2021. And I was, I was coming over on the plane today. The Lord said you could do that. So thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Go with me to the book of 2 Kings. That's right past 1 Kings for you people that don't read the Bible. <laughs> well, you'd be surprised how many people don't. They just wait for Matt to read it. That's the truth. I mean, it's just a fact. I don't know. It's not a shot. It just, it's just the truth. 2 Kings chapter 4. In, in 2020, 2020, right before, right after Christmas, the Lord gave me the theme for 2021. And, uh, and it just really blessed me. And he said, I want you to write 12 partner letters on it. It's all your partners. So I'm doing that, taking different scenes of this, this thing. And I want you to listen to me. First, I'm going to say something about finance. There's no such thing as bad money. It does not exist. Money put food in your belly today. It put clothes on your back today. It put gas in your car today. There's no such thing as bad money. It's the love of money that's bad. You don't fall in love with this because God will have no other gods before. Or in other words, money is not your security. Because every bit of money you got in your pocket is a Federal Reserve note with a $28 trillion debt on it. Yeah, yeah but I buy Bitcoin. You don't even know what that is. <laughs> what is Bitcoin? What is it made of? It's digital currency. I know all that. I'm not talking. What is it made of? See, the difference between the, my generation, younger people, they're buying Bitcoin. We buy gold and silver. Why? Because <laughs> it worth something. But you see, it's done in digital currency, and I'm not knocking it. Don't misunderstand me. I got Bitcoin. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But what I'm saying is, if you bite it, 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 but if you bite that gold coin, that's a whole nother ball game right there. That's a little food for thought. I want you to listen to this today. Second Kings chapter 4, I like the old King James Version. I want to read it. Verse 1. Now there cried a, woman, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant... My husband is dead. Notice this woman. Women put the pressure on you, man. Hey, I'm going to tell you something, Elijah. Your servant, he worked for you. He worked for you. My husband is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord or respect the Lord. And the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Now, who was that man? Who was her husband? You know who he was? That was Obadiah. The prophet Obadiah. He wrote a book. Here. See, you can be under a great prophet ministry. You can be under a living word teaching and yet not grasp certain things in it. Why did he leave his wife in debt? He, probably, he was probably highly developed in a lot of other areas, but he wasn't developed in that. Now, think about that. He left her in debt. Now, watch what Elisha says in verse 2. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? In other words, he didn't say that. Oh, you know, well, listen, man, well, we can get you, send you some flowers and, you know, and get you a couple of dinners and stuff, but that's about the best we can do. No, he opened up the whole can. What shall I do for thee? What do you want? Now, I want to say this, and I'm going to get into this message. You know why you don't have enough money? Do you want to know why? Because you don't know what you want. You only know what you need. You got no problem knowing your need, but you got problems knowing what you want. The Bible said, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not. Is the Lord your shepherd? Is the Lord your shepherd? Oh, let me get black with it. Is the Lord your shepherd? Woo! I shall not want. So don't get mad at me if I don't want nothing. I'm just being biblical here. The reason why I gave that plane to these people, because I knew they would use it for the Lord to get people saved. I want to get out of here. I want to start my eternal work in heaven. He said, what shall I do for thee? Then he asked her, what do you have in the house? He asked for a seed. Why? That's the law of Genesis. That's the law of the planet Earth. As long as the Earth remains seed time, harvest time. You are a product of that law also. All you people here. Your mama and daddy sowed some seed. They did it. They did. And you are the product of that sowing. You're the harvest. Think about that for a minute. What shall I do for thee? Now, I want you to take some notes. I'm going to try to teach this the best I can because I want to preach it. But what shall I do for thee? Write this down. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. 
Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive because you're worried about what somebody might say. I have been rawly criticized for my plane, but you're not, you, did you hear Inside Edition? Did, you ever, did they tell you I gave one away? Huh? No. They don't talk about that, see? You see? You understand what I'm saying? And many other things. They said I own four jets. I, that's not true. Not at one time, for sure. Because if I do, I need to make a theft report because three of them are missing. <laughs> and I want to know where they are. <laughs> see, it, it just lies. And yet the world believes them. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. What can you receive from God? Because you see, if you don't know what you want, you're going to be very limited in your receiving. Because you only receive what you need. And the Bible said, they supply how many need? So why would you ask him for anything? Why? That's a waste of spiritual energy. When he said he'd supply all, well, what are you doing? It's a form of doubt. Thank you for that Holy Ghost grunt. Y'all listening today. Listen to me. God's serious about his word. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. Write this down. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. What are you willing to declare? And take the heat and the persecution from it. Well, I am an Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 boy. If you be willing and obedient. So it's very possible to be willing and disobedient. See, these are conditional things. If you be willing, Isaiah 119, if you be willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Now, I knew I could wear this today because I was coming to Max. But my mother's in heaven. I can hear that woman screaming at me, put that shirt in your pants, boy. <laughs> but Matt told me one time I had my shirt in my pants. He said, Jesse, you're out of fashion here. Yeah. You got to leave the shirt out. Remember you tell me? <laughs> and then I came in, he got his shirt in his pants. <laughs> Y'all need to pray for Mac Hammond. He just changed too much. I don't know. <laughs> your blessing, your blessings are tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Yeah, but, but just I don't know. What, what do you mean you don't know? Write this down. I don't know limits you in life. And cause you to live in lack. I don't know limits you in life. And causes you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. You are good people. You are great givers. You that have already given to this great project. You should have that hundredfold by next week. Why? Wow, put the pressure on the covenant, not on people. I don't put the pressure on people. I don't preach with my hands out. I preach with my hands up. Because that's where that blessing is. And you got to get radical with this thing. The Bible said the violet take it by force. Get your hand off my money, devil. You understand? And I mean get angry about it. Not mad, angry. Righteous indignation. Because you're sowers of seed. See, I don't know limits you in life and cause you to live in lack. And not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. 2 Timothy 1.12, for I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded. <laughs> I know. I'm not unbelieving. I know in whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I commit. But what do you commit? What are you willing to do? See, God is screaming from the throne, the Father, what shall I do for thee? Ask me. My warehouses are full. Come on. Let me be the blessing I want to be. And you got this. I ain't worthy, Lord. I ain't worthy. He's going, shut up. There you are. The world is going to hell in a handbasket, you know. People don't even know what sex they are. <laughs> Man, they got, I saw an application the other day. Male, female, other. What's the other? I don't know what I am. Check your equipment. It tells you what you are. Quit being an ignorant fool. I shocked you right there. I know. It tells you what you are. I mean, I don't feel, it don't, I don't feel, I don't feel like a woman. Hey, I don't care. You don't feel married, but you are. 
You don't feel like going to work, but you're going. You don't, kids don't feel like going to school, but you get your little self up, you're going to be educated. See, it's the days of Noah. But in the midst of the days of Noah, the church will flourish. You know why I know that? You know what I love about this thing that you're going to do with this plane? Jesus said, I will build my church. He didn't say, I built my church. See, people think that. See, I built. No, no, no. I will build. So every time you and Mac take that thing, bring people, get somebody, say, establish a church. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That's, that's the mission of God. I'm not just saying that for you to give some. I do this myself. You see, I commit to him everything. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in the lack, not knowing what causes a delay in your blessing. Well, Brother Jesse, how do you get it? There's one word. I want you to say it after I say it. Persistency. Say it. Got to be persistent. It's like a grandkid. When they want a cookie, they will drive you nuts. They know where that cookie is. And you get now you can't have that, that's that sugar stuff. And you can't do that. But my, especially to mama, ma, 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 ma. Well, in fact, you get so frustrated, you give them the whole bag. <laughs> now, grandparents don't have to do that at all. They just load up the kids with sugar and send them home. <laughs> Payback time. Glory to God. Get them sugar hot. <laughs> you mean my mom and dad? Yeah, your mom and dad. <laughs> you up all night with your kid <laughs> and your mother and father going, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates, I love that, of God's power to you. See, I mean, I, I, I'm like a pit bull dog. I bite down on something. I ain't giving up on nothing. Do what you beat me in the head and kill me. It doesn't make any difference. I made up my mind. I'm going to have what this Bible said I could have. How long did it take? What I'm worried about that for? I'm going to live forever. Well, I lost you over here, so I better go over here. You just, do you understand what I'm saying? I'm an eternal being. I'm a spirit housed in the soul, clothed in the body. Why could he say, what shall I do for thee? You know, all he, at one time he was a servant to Elijah. Elijah liked Elisha. Elijah had a school of prophets. Elijah knew, how would you like it when, if God would tell you, I'm going to take your boss off the planet? What about my job? But Elisha knew it. He said, what shall I do for you? What did Elisha say? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He didn't say, I want a double portion of your anointing. That boy had some anointing. I want a double portion of your spirit, because if I got a double portion of your spirit, I can get everything you, plus, what you do plus, because it's more than the anointing. Jesus said, it's expedient that I go away, because I got to give you another spirit. It's called the comforter. How many of y'all believe the Holy Ghost is here? Yeah. How come people are not in comfort? Because they're afraid, fear, tolerated, faith, contaminated. Brother Copeland says that. They're afraid to ask God anything. And yet St. John 14, verses 12, 13, 14 says, Go do the work that I do, and greater than these shall you do, because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Why? That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Then Jesus goes super radical. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. But see, you've got to ask in faith. Nothing wavering. Persistent, boy. Now, this is a very important point. I want you to write it down. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. You know how many people that's happening to right now, even as I speak? They're afraid to choose something, so they don't choose anything. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. See, everybody was trying to delay Elisha's blessing. He said, he said uh, uh, you know, the prophets of Jericho and the prophets of Bethel were saying the same thing. Hey, uh, Elisha, uh, God's going to take, God's, God, God's take your boss. Shut up. I know it. 
Elijah said, won't you just stay here? I ain't leaving. I ain't going. Well, you go, I go. You go to the bathroom, I'm in the next stall, son. <laughs> you ain't going nowhere without me. That's persistent. But that was the condition of receiving the double portion of spirit. If you see me go up. And the only time he ever used the anointing of Elijah was when he crossed that Jordan. You know why he did that? And he hit that Jordan with that mantle? Because there were 50 prophets at the school of prophets watching him. Let's see what he's got. He said the anointing of Elijah. After that, it was over. Now it's Elisha's time. Now double portion spirit greater than that mantle. But he had to have something to make, because the 50 prophets, I don't know if I'm going to hang with Elisha. He's just a servant. Now he's the head. Hmm. Don't let the fear of choosing make you choose nothing. I don't know is sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. Pick and stick. Pick and stick. You pick something, stick. Now, y'all have a vision for this plan. Pick and stick. Come hell or high water. It don't make no difference what anybody says. Pick and stick, buddy. Me and Kathy have been married 51 years. You know why? Pick and stick. Now, she don't look like she did when I married her. She looks better. <laughs> I think so. I know I don't look. I know I don't look like I did when I married her because I got a picture of me before. Something happened. <laughs> I live in the South and everything else went South. <laughs> God help us. I had a lady the other day, and I said the other day, I get in these time walks, it was about eight months ago. She said, but Jesse, you think it's a sin for a woman to have a facelift? I said, no. You want one of those? Yes, yeah. she said, but you know, I, I don't want to be, be in vain of vanity. I said, well, ma'am, if you didn't have teeth, go get some. <laughs> hey, you know, common sense, get you some teeth. I said, but since you're going to have a facelift, do your neck too. <laughs> Look at the women. Oh! I said, your face is all fine, but that neck is slapping people <laughs> when the women go by. <laughs> I said that at the Southwest Believers Convention, a woman chewed me up. She said, every time I see myself, I see my neck. I said, well, do something about it. Mine too? Look. Look, look how loose that is. It's just loose. <sighs> Don't look around at nobody. Everybody look around. I got a friend of mine, he got so much Botox in his eyes. I swear to God. I was in a hotel room. He's like, yeah. All of a sudden he goes like, yeah. I look at I see he's sleeping. He can't close his eyes. I woke him up. I said, you were asleep, you can't close your eyes. He goes, I was wondering why my eyes burned so much. He said, can you tell? I went, no. I... <laughs> That's a true story. <laughs> Think about if he died and he opened up the coffin two weeks later. Whoa, Jesus, help us, Lord. All right, let me get on with this here, praise God. So I can make you laugh because what I'm preaching is very hard. So I got to lace this here. I don't know if sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. Pick and stick. Yeah, but what are people going to say? Don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. You don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. Uh -uh. You know how many people, I, you're looking at a person that's been rawly persecuted. I could care less. Why? Because I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded. I've already committed in my life. It doesn't make a lick of difference what they say. I'm not listening to anything they say. Well, because I'm in the world, but I'm not of it. And so are you. See, it's time for you to receive spiritually, physically, financially. You got to get to that point. Don't limit this capacity to receive. Mm. Don't do that when God wants you to do this. And he does it, uh, you know, he could do it other ways, but he does it with sowing and reaping. Why? I don't know. You got to ask him. That's just his law. As long as the earth remains, seed time, harvest time. You see, you must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. Write that down. 
if you're taking notes. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. Why? God will overrule their objections. How many times the people are objecting? God says, overruled. Man, they objected me having a plane. Overruled. Didn't make a lick of difference. So I just said that the judge and overruled it. So it, 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 it's, it's no longer in the uh, case. It's been overruled. God, you should need to awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. God will overrule all their objections. So I made up my mind. That what did God say? See, there's only two things Jesus ever did in his ministry. He said, I only say what my father says, and I only do what my father says to do. Well, since he did that, that's what I do. I only say what my father says, and I only do what my father says to do. Because you see, I'm part of the family. I'm adopted. My name is Jesse DePlantis Christ. I'm in the family. <laughs> Made me an offer. Couldn't refuse. I just took it. Who do you think you are? How much time you got? Sit down. Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was out form and void. Darkness on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of the Lord God said, let's make Jesse. <laughs> let's make him in our image. Whoa. <laughs> and our likeness. Because if you don't like me, you ain't going to like God. Because I'm made in his likeness. Hmm. See, God always gives in overflowing. How do you know if it's God? Uh, at my uh, visionary conference last year, I was flowing in the Holy Ghost, and I said, God's going to make two millionaires right here, right here in this section here. People shout it and scream. Well, this year, my God... They were standing up everywhere. It, uh, this thing's getting, it, it's just getting, well, Brother Copeland sent 14 of his own staff. I mean, I mean, it's happening, buddy. To make a long story short, <laughs> these two people, I didn't know who it walked up and they said, Brother Jesse, remember when you gave that word? I said, yes. He said, you said God would make me a millionaire? I said, yes. He said, he didn't do it. I said, he didn't. He said, no, he made me a multimillionaire. He said, I, I'm multi. And then the other guy said, me too. <laughs> In a year. And the Lord said, that's always me. I never just do enough. Come on now. I'm El Shaddai. I'm God. That's more than enough. So this is the beginning of the fleet. Put, put the plane up there. Put the plane up there. That's the beginning of the fleet. I heard you talk about that for years. Why, y'all? Why you? Why? Living word. Not dead word. No word. Maybe a word. I don't know word. Living word. Creating life. Everywhere they go. God always gives an overflowing. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, and limited words. That's yes, how you cap it off. Limited thinking, limited faith, and limited words. I had a man mad at me three weeks ago. How much money is it going to take to shut your mouth? I looked at him and said, $6,364,000,000, baby. You got a check? I'm going to tell you exactly what I said. And then I'll shut the hell up. Give me my money. He goes, Ugh. I said, oh, go away. Now, do I need that money? No. That's what God told me to do. Seven low orbit, seven high orbit. That's seven. That's six billion right there. I wish it was cheaper. I wish it was. I wish television was cheaper. Don't you wish uh, 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 the winner's minute was cheaper? Who, who don't like a good deal? That's not the issue. It's whatever it takes. That's what you do. So I, so I refuse to have limited thinking, limited faith, or limited words. That's capping off God's goodness. I refuse to do that. Let me tell you something about Jesus. Now, this is going to shock you when I say that. <laughs> Jesus was no wimp. Jesus was tough. Because he was going through things he had never experienced before as God. He had to learn to be human. Took him 30 years. 
you have to learn to be spirit. You're a spirit housed in a soul, clothed in the body. Watch this. The only part of God that became sin was Jesus. The Father could not look upon him on the cross because my sin and your sin was on him, so he turned his back. Jesus, became, he was not a sinner. He was made sin. The only part of the Godhead that touched sin became what they despise for you. There was no limited thinking in that. There was no limited faith in that. There was no limited word. He said, I will do this for my father. But he had enough. Where you leave my soul in hell. The bulls of Bashan are around me. Psalms 22, go read it. The bulls of Bashan are not in heaven. And the father blew him out of there. With unlimited thinking, unlimited faith, and unlimited words. He had to learn to be human. And you can hear it. Now, here's the thing. Hang on, grab your seat when I say, Jesus had a little gangster in him. <laughs> I've been a gangster. I know what I'm talking about. Well, I was, I was raised on the streets of New Orleans. That's all I'm going to say, but I'm telling you. Don't matter how big you are, how small you are. Baseball bat, gun, car. Boom, boom. Take care of it. Go. Where's Fred? Now, you laugh at that, but eh, that was serious business when I was growing up. Watch it. Jesus had a little gangster, not in a bad way, though, in a good way. Yeah, they said, we're going to kill you. Don't they sound like gangsters? What? We're going to kill you. I'll tell you something. Ain't nobody take my life away from me. You understand? I lay my, down, I lay my life down freely. You got that? You go tell that Herod, that fox, that fool, that I am going to raise the dead, heal the sick, whether he like it or not. Don't that sound gangster? A little gangster, right? We're going to push you off a cliff. Get out of my face. Even after he resurrected, he had a little gangster in him. Saul of Tarsus. Jesus slapped him off his donkey. You want me to get biblical with it? He slapped him off his ass. Don't get mad at me. It's in the Bible. Right here. <laughs> Look at y'all. Hey. And what did Saul of Tarsus say? Who, Lord, what would I have me to do? What did Jesus say? You want to dance with me? You're persecuting me, baby. You want some of this? Come on. Let's see what you got. That's a little gangster. Not in a bad way. It's a way of power and authority. Think about that. Now, some people are going to freak out over there, but that's in that book. Because God did not create you a wimp. Now, I'm not going around telling you to slap people, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, uh-uh, you're not doing this. I tell it to the devil all the time. I say, you do nothing. You got nothing. You get under my feet. And I'm not bragging about that. I don't attack him in the flesh because he would destroy me. That's what he is. I deal with him in the spirit because he's forgot how to live by spirit. He doesn't know anymore. He didn't, he didn't even know Jesus was the son of God. He didn't know even after he killed him until God blew him out of hell. He hear him go, oh man, if we'd have known, God, we'd have never crucified him. What did Jesus say in hell? Will you leave my soul in hell? God said, what shall I do for thee? Watch this, boy. Set him free. Don't let your destiny in receiving pass you by. Don't let it pass you by. Can I just say it this way? If you miss this theme, what shall I do for thee? You will miss your opportunity and never reach your destination. Because if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to know when you get there. That's the problem with people. They don't know where they're going. So they don't, they don't know when they're going to get there. I know where I'm going. Now, I don't know how to fly that plane. 
There's no signs up there. We were at 43,000 feet doing 570 miles an hour today. There's no sign that says, Brooklyn Park, dive. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of that, uh, that airport? Oh, oh, no, no, Hoko, whatever you call it. What's the name of it? What's the, yeah, the, the, where, where, you, where your hangar is. Anoko? Well, if you knew, why are you asking me? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden, I just put up the, sh the shades in the plane. I press a button. I have cabin management. Press a button. Everything just starts working. And I went, we had max. Here we go. Praise the Lord. I got out the plane. They, they were heading me straight, you know, to the, uh, that, what do you have, suburban, I guess, or whatever, something like that. And I said, stop. I got to go look at the baby. And I walked over to that Put the plane up. Put the plane up, for God's sake. <laughs> I walked in. I said, you miss me? I worked you like a dog, didn't I? I had you in the air almost 24-7. He said, I'm ready to go again. He said, we're going to do more than we did when I worked for you. I don't doubt both planes are talking to each other right now. I believe that plane is saying, are you ready to go to work, boy? <laughs> He's going to run you till the wheels fall off. You understand? <laughs> yeah. Mm. To get in touch with God, you must use his language. What is his language? His language is prayer. Yeah. To get in touch with him, you've got to use his language. That's why it's good to have a secret place, a place where you can talk. I got to tell you something happened to me the other day. It blew me away. I have one daughter. Jody's my eyes. She said something so silly the other day. She said, Dad, she's freaking out. She's going to be 50 in October, October 25th. She said, Dad, can you believe it? I said, believe what? That you're going to have a daughter 50 years old? I said, yeah, I was there when you was born. <laughs> yeah, I can believe it. I paid for you. <laughs> of course, I want all my money back on blackjack from that doctor. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I was a gangster. I, said, I did. I won the money back. I did. I said, Jody, 50 is nothing. I said, look at me, I'm 72. She says, Dad, you've always looked old. <laughs> I said, okay. She said, no, no, I didn't, that didn't sound right. No, it's Dad, you've had gray hair when you were 30 years to 33 years old. You just don't change. You just look the same most of the time. But go back and look at some of them old videos back when I first started with Brother Cope. You can see the difference. There's none of this. Well, we have a granddaughter. Oh, she's such a blessing. Her name is Meredith Margot Walker. You heard me talk about her. We call her m, &M. She loves to come to the house. She says, grandfather calls me grandfather. Well, I'm going to come over and sleep. I said, come on, girl. Come on. Now, she's 13. Looks, she's taller than Kathy now. Oh, this is something. She looks 17, which we don't like. You know, <laughs> development. And I see boys. I go, She said, what's that? I said, sign language. <laughs> so she comes, and she loves my theater. I have a beautiful theater in my home. And uh, so I said, Em, watch this. I'm shocked. I didn't expect this at all. I said, Em, what do you want to watch? You want to watch a movie? She goes, no, let's talk. I said, talk? <laughs> yes, let's go up to the fun room and talk. I said, OK. And I sat down, I said, what do you want to talk about? She said, grandfather, you ever had a broken heart? Who was your first girlfriend? I said, Peggy Guidry. <laughs> I loved her. She, I was 12 years old. Ah! She broke your heart and busted it to pieces. My daddy said, well, don't worry about that, boy. It's puppy love. But let me tell you something, Meredith. Puppy love hurts, too. She said, Mimi, has Mimi ever had a broken heart? I said, no, Mimi breaks hearts. <laughs> <laughs> so Kathy come walking in, she calls her Mimi. Mimi, you break hearts? She said, yes. She said, but now your grandfather hurt my heart many times. And I said. <laughs> she said, have you had a crush? You ever had a crush? I'm thinking, what is going on here? 
I said, you have a crush? She goes, yeah. I said, it's a boy, isn't it? <laughs> you got to ask today, buddy. She said, yeah, that's good. Mary, that's good, that's good. Don't get mad at me. Don't send me no ugly letter. She started asking me all kinds of stuff, and I just stopped. I said, Mary, I know nothing about this stuff. Grandfather knows nothing about this. You have to ask your Mimi or your mama. That's it. But I got to thinking, pretty nice for a granddaughter to sit down and want to talk to her grandfather about crushes? Yeah. Amen. Broken hearts? I thought that was pretty nice. I thought... You know, she's my legacy. Then she said it again. Grandfather. I went, what? How much money you got? <laughs> Where is it? I want to see it. I said, you're not quite old enough to get there yet. But one day, grandfather going to sit you down. Just like I sat your mother down. And you're going to know it all. Kind of sounds like God, doesn't it? Yeah, she's just not able to accept that, but she will. She asked me about money. She said, well, how do you make money? I said, there's two ways to make money. You can work for money. That's a good thing. You can have a great job, work all your life and retire. That's a wonderful thing. Or you can work money. She said, what do you do? I said, I do both. I work for and I work. And I said, and my anointing is in you, so you won't have to be concerned about that. But listen to me. I'll help you if you let me. Let me say this in close. I was saying that for her. I wanted to fix her mind on what I was saying. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. That's Romans 4, verses 19 and 21. Abraham says, I consider not my body. I stagger not at the promise of God, and I'm fully persuaded. See, that's fixed thoughts. Yet, if you look at the natural, nothing's working. It has nothing to do with that. Fix thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. What did he say you can have? There's over 7,000 promises in the Bible. Most people know about 12 to 15. Over 7,000. Mm. Not only can God do what you ask, believe God will do what you ask. I really believe God's... We, we are believing for this plane to fly to the different places. Yeah. Well, why don't you go airline? Wish we could, but you got to wait on them. This year ain't got to wait. You jump, go, boom. Let me give you an idea how powerful that is. When Brother Copeland asked me and Jerry to go to Guadalcanal, I've been getting hit all the time about vaccinations and stuff. People ask me about that. I ain't got no problem with vaccination. You want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. You don't want to? That's your business. And what I don't like is somebody telling me I have to. I'm an American. I'm an American. You understand what I'm saying? Now don't cross that line. I'm an American. And I had no problem with vaccinating because I remember when they just, remember when, uh, you're probably not my age, they had something called smallpox vaccine. They would take a needle, go, da, 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 da. anybody got that scar on your arm? Look, it was called immunization. Remember that? And you know, when they gave people polio, some people got polio. So every vaccination has some side effect. Maybe millions of people, four, five, six, I, I, you don't want to be that person, but that does happen. I said, but it's, you, got, you do whatever you want to do. I, I, when they're asking me, I said, that's not my decision. That's between you and God. Because if you don't want to go somewhere, you won't. And if you want to, you will. Right. You want to wear a mask, wear a mask. You don't want to wear a mask, don't wear a mask. Just don't tell me I got to do all this. I'm an American. You taught me to be free, which means you made me a rebel. And I'm from the South. And we still hadn't forgot we lost. Not over the slavery. That needed to be done away with. That was wrong. You can't do that. You see, what people don't, let me hurry up here. What people don't understand about me, a lot of things I do, people don't know. I've been a patriot from day one. I don't like some things that America has done, but you can't change the past. But you certainly can change the future. But what a lot of people don't realize what I do, I was not born in World War II. I was born July the 9th, 1949. So I'm a, I'm a war baby after World War II. But my dad, World War II, my grandfather, World War I. So what I do, I've traveled all over the world. I find out where people buried who made the supreme sacrifices. 
for this nation. So I've been to Honolulu, uh, Hawaii, 107 times, preaching every time. I mean, preaching my guts. I preached on all those islands except one, and that's Robinson Island. They call it Niama, which has no electricity, and you have to be invited to go. Yeah, you know, just the way it is. You got to be invited. You can't go, you know, even though it's America. So watch this. There's a place called the Punch Bowl. It's an extinct volcano. If you've been to Honolulu, you know what I'm talking about. Where they buried people that died in the Pacific Theater. Thousands upon thousands of people. I mean, it's beautiful. I mean, the gr just gorgeous. Well, <laughs> it touches me a little bit when I think about that. So I go in there. Now, remember, I wasn't born. And I walk, and I start looking at all these headstones and things. And, I, and I'll just change the name to be kind. Harry such and such, born February the 3rd, 1925, died May the 7th, 1945. That's 20 years old. And I thought, hmm, he probably wanted to be a father. He probably wanted to be a grandfather. I'm pretty sure maybe he wanted a family. I don't know, you know. He died for me so I could be born. You understand what I'm saying? He gave his life for me. Freedom. Women too. So I walk up to these graves and I say, have I been a good American? Have I honored your sacrifice? I don't know you, but you lay in this ground so I could be free. Have I been a good American? I want to be a good American so I can honor you and what you did. When I went to Jerusalem and I stood at Calvary, I looked up and said, you died for me. Have I been a good Christian? Have I been a good Christian? I, I, I want to honor your sacrifice. And you got people still trying to pull that prejudiced devil coming around. I worried about people's skin. Come with me to Martin Luther King's monument. That man died so that people could come together and be the human race. He died. He died. They shot him. So his kids wouldn't be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. So when I hear people talking, I said, come with me. Tell him. And you, just, you want to segregate? He gave his life. So we could be free. What shall I do for thee? See, it's all in the same thing. So I honor those that went before me. As an American, I'm going to be a good American. I'm going to be a good Christian. I'm going to be a good human being. And I will never recognize the color of your skin. I don't care what nationality, color, creed you are. You are a human being. You're created in God's image. And if you're a woman, you're my sister. And if you're a man, you're my brother. And that's it. See what I'm saying? What shall I do for thee? I can hear the screaming from God. I want to be such a blessing to my children. He said, you understand, Jesse, you always want to do something for Kathy. You always want to do something for Jody. You're always trying to do something for Mary. Yeah, he said, you, and, but that's so small compared to what I want to do. So I asked him today in my devotion, have I, have I been a good Christian? He said, you've, you've been a good Christian, Jesse. I said, you know, I blew it sometimes. He said, I know. He said, read it, tell you the truth. I'm saying that for your sake. He said, I really don't know what you're talking about. He said, I put all your sin behind my back. That's a scripture. You know why he did that? Because he never backs up. He's never going to run into your sin again. He's always walking forward. He's going forward. He's a creator. He's going this way. He's never backing up. I said, I will be the person you want me to be. I'm not bragging about that. That's not arrogance and cockiness, but it is assurance and confidence. So in just a minute, you're going to give to this great vision. Now, <laughs> what shall God do for you? 
It can be spiritual. It can be physical. It can be financial. It can be all three. You're, you're going to have someone persecute you. You're going to have somebody saying, I don't think you ought to have that. I've had many people told me, I don't think you ought to have that plane. I don't think I asked you. <laughs> and I don't mean that to be rude or, you know, wrong. I'm just, excuse me. It's a tool. It brought me here. Just like this pulpit is holding my Bible. That, that plane holds my body. Think about that. When you get to heaven, because you gave, somebody from Pakistan will come running up to you and say, I, I was dying and going to hell, but living word came to me. And because you gave, I'm here. Do, do you understand that this is more than money? This is life. That's why Jesus went to Samaria. He, the Jews hate Samaritans. The disciples freaked out that he was even talking to that woman. But he had to touch her for Jesus. She became a Samaritan evangelist. Tell the whole city, come out and see. I met the Messiah. Now, what partner financed Jesus' trip to Samaria? You know, he had them. Mary, Martha, Lazarus, Johanna, Herod, Herod Stewart, his wife, a well, very wealthy woman. They ministered to him. Yeah. That's what your offering's about. It's not just finance, but how about hundredfold? Hundredfold, not a hundred times. That's mathematics. Get away from mathematics. That's the Babylonian system. Hundredfold. Watch it. I fold it. It just doubled right there. And they doubled again. Now it's four. Now it's up eight. It's doubling every time I'm doubling it. See, uh, see it's doubling. Look how much more I got to go. Why don't you believe a figure that you can't even pronounce? Well, you know why? You got to think anyway, so you might as well think big. You know who said that? Donald Trump. He said that to Ivanka. He said, Ivanka, when she was a kid, you're going to think anyway, so you might as well think big. You're going to think anyway. So I asked you the question, what shall I do for the ushers? I want you to get ready. We're going to give toward this. Put the plane up there. Can you put it on all three? Is that possible? Oh, look how white my hair is. Good God. <laughs> I had that plane painted that way because it's fast. You may change the plane. I know you can probably change the number on it and all that kind of stuff. That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Think of that thing, stopping somebody from going to hell. And you know, I could see it suffering because they never seen much snow. <laughs> look at the snow. And I'm pretty sure he said, you left me in the cold. <laughs> Good Lord. We're going to ask you to do your blessing. We're going to believe in God for a million dollars. We had 600-something thousand already. My Lord. But how about a hundredfold? I already, I brought my offering. Did I, didn't I, Mac? I gave it to you before I came out here. Can I tell him? Is that all right? It was, I brought 25,000, put it in his hand. But that's not the end of it. It's, it's, turning, it's turning into 75,000. Now you can applaud. <laughs> yeah, but you gave the plane. No. I obeyed. God gave the plane. So I'm going to ask you to do your best. It could be $1,000. It could be $10,000. It might be $100,000. I don't know. could be a million. Oh, they ain't got people like that with money. You'd be surprised. You have no idea what people have. You have no idea. I'm going to ask you to do your best. Do you all have offering envelopes? Are you all passing them out? Brother, have you already passed them out and everything? Okay, if you're writing a check out, you make it. Back of the chair is the offering envelope. We ask you to make it out to a living word. And people are going to get saved. I know it's going to make Lynn happy. That's a prayer warrior there, son. Every devil in hell is going to say, oh, God, she's coming. Oh, God. 
You know, Lynn got a little gangster in her too. I saw her, you know, I can see that. I've seen her get a little mad. She go, she get that, that eye like, what? I'm glad it wasn't me. It was Max she was looking at. It wasn't me. I said, he's over there. <laughs> People being saved. People being healed. Satan being thrown out of countries. Whew. You know, I don't mind when United buys a new plane. I don't mind when Amazon, Bezos, buys a new plane. I don't mind when Samaritan Purse and Billy Graham Evangelistic Association buys planes. Look at those planes. They send all that food. You know how much things cost? Tons of money. It's the work of the kingdom. So next time somebody says, your pastor has a plane, yeah, you ought to have one too. <laughs> and what you ought to do is say, we go to live where we believe in God for all of us to have planes, and when he go preach, we go fly over and listen to him, and we're back for Sunday. <laughs> it's just a tool. That's unheard of. No, it is not. It can be done. It can be and will be Amen. if somebody have the guts to believe it. So get your envelope behind the chair. Make it out to the living word. If you're watching online, send something. Be a blessing. Watch God do the most unbelievable things you've ever saw for you. You can text the give online. You can mail your gift to the address shown on the screen. Or you can drop off your offering, you know, in, in, in the main lobby. Just whatever you want to do it. Do y'all use PayPal? I don't know if y'all use any of that. Or text to get all kinds of different things. Use every available outlet, whatever. Let's get this thing moving. Now, you know what? Every six years, you have to do major inspections on planes. I just wish they didn't, but that's just the way it is. You just do it. But you know you can't pull, you can't pull over on the side of the road at 40,000 feet. <laughs> so you got to make sure this is done. And sad to say, they raised the prices. I changed. Put, put, the, plane, put the plane up there. <laughs> okay, you see that front gear right there? I changed that many years ago, and I, re I cut a deal with a guy, and it was $70,000, that little, looked like a little piece of pipe, but that's more than just pipe, you know what I'm saying? That's a lot, that's phenomenal metal and things of that nature. He said, I'll charge you $70,000. When I went to pick it up, he charged me $140,000. Oh, that made me mad. I said, why'd you do that? Right to my face, he said, because I can. That's aviation. Oh, I was hot. I wanted to say, oh, you better thank God I'm saved. Because <laughs> if that had happened when I was a sinner, I'd say, I'll see you soon. <laughs> but, you know, there's only one company in America that does it. I'm believing God for competition. Yeah. See, and these things, you got to understand about this plane. That thing go up to 45,000 feet. Outside, it's minus 80 below zero when you're flying that high. Inside, it's 72. You got this much metal between you and death. That's why these things cost so much, because they have to expand, heat, freezing. It's phenomenal what mankind has done. And it's going to do great service. It served me, and it will serve living word. I'm glad that God used me to give it. I really did. I mean, I'm not bragging on it. I'm just, but he did, I, just, I just obeyed. And you know, after I gave it, I didn't tell you this, but the Lord said, thank you, Jesse. I said, nothing, Lord. Don't worry about it. <laughs> he said, I'm going to bless you, and gave me a beautiful aircraft. Boy, has he ever. <clears throat> and the reason why pre, uh, the devil hates Airplanes from preachers, we fly through his house. <laughs> See, he's the prince of the power of the air. He's there comes Mac, get out the way. <laughs> there comes Jesse, get out the way. That's old Criflo, get out the way, Lord Jesus. That come Kenneth, Jesus is Lord. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> fly, fly through the space, man. That's great. Hold you offering up to the Lord, I want to pray over it. Are you that are watching today, we're on this camera right here, are you ready to do something? And are you ready to receive 
find out what you want. Name that seed. Father, I thank you today for this glorious gift that's going to be used for your glory and honor. Lord, you've given me a hundredfold so many times. I want you to give it to these people. I ask you, Lord, and I thank you that that plane that I once owned is flying for the gospel of Jesus. I decree and declare it today in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ushers, go ahead, you coming up? Uh, She's got something. Yeah, come on up here. I saw that. Hallelujah. I, I looked at it. Yeah, come on, come on, sweetheart. Um, th this is where we are right now. Psalms chapter 2. Why are the nations in an uproar, in turmoil against God? And why do the people devise a vain and hopeless plot? The kings of the earth take their stand, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. Let us break apart their divine bands of restraint and cast away the cords of control on us, not just us, but the nations of the world. <clears throat> and if you go on down here, he says, ask of me for the nations. <clears throat> Just ask me for them. Ask of me for the nations, and I will give you the uttermost parts of the earth. Which part do you want? What part of it do you want? We just heard about them. They're all in an uproar and a turmoil. You just think about Afghanistan. Right now, actually, I think about those Christians and I get so happy for them because they're going to be martyred and everybody goes martyred, you know, but they'll have the highest reward in heaven. They'll get a martyr's crown, all of them, and they'll beat us there for sure. But then the rest of them. And that's not the only one. And here we sit. And God's going to give us the means. Yeah. And we're going to rise in the anointing and the power of God. And the healing power of God's going to flow from our hands. Hallelujah. And we're going to the nations. Hallelujah, Lord. Sink or swim, live or die, we're going to the nations. Amen. Oh, isn't that Jesus? That's such a blessing. Thank you for saying that, man. Let's ask him for yeah. the nations. Yeah. And the uttermost parts of the earth. Let's just do it right now. Everybody, Let's get your it. faith up. Thank you, Father, right now. Yes, Lord. We're sowing into our part. Wherever that is you want us to go, show us, Lord. Guide us by your spirit. And every person in here, we vow to take our place, do whatever it takes to go. Yes, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. As they receive today in that bucket of passing by, you declare your hundredfold. Yeah, because you're going to need it. You're going to need it for the school system here. We won't go over into that. You're going to need it for our kids Amen. and to save this community, our children. Amen. Amen. Let me yeah. tell you something. Every plane I've owned is still flying for the work of the king, except for the very first one. I, I bought it, I flew it nine years, then Keith Moore flew it four years, then uh, Happy Caldwell flew it three years, and then Dean Sykes flew it about two years, and it finally gave out. I mean, it was a, a little Citation 500. Right. And I, I had a West Wind, that one's flying for Jesus, bringing food to children in Nicaragua. Then, of course, the Falcon 50, which is the one is now going all over the world, being prepared for that. And then the one I have now, the Falcon 900, we're going all over the world preaching the gospel. I told the Lord, all this equipment belongs to you. I don't want heathens to get a hold of it. Amen. I want it to be used for God's kingdom. Yeah. 
Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. I really believe this, and I say this under the anointing of God. When y'all make your first trip out there, people are going to come out there, you know, with their sticks and, and, and they're parking and all that kind of stuff. They're going to get around that plane. The, the, the anointing of God is on that plane. I've had people come and they go, there's something in this plane. I said, it's God. Someone go, oh, let me get out of here. You know, because they, they're not saved. They, they sense it. He, he gets into things. God just does that. And you're a great gift. I can see it in the spirit right now. People are being stopped from going to hell. I mean, just hit a wall of blessing. I mean, well, there's one scripture that says nations will come to him in a day. That's right. And you know what? I always wondered about that. I said, no, how can I... you save a nation? I got the answer. And then he said, all eyes will see him. Listen to this, Lynn. I found out the answer that three weeks ago. Right now, because of the internet, we can touch the whole world in seven minutes. That's 7.7 .7 billion people. I said, okay, we got that side. He can save a nation in a day on, on online. But how can everybody see him? Elon Musk just put up 150 satellites all the way around so that the internet and everything can be seen. All they got to do is turn the satellites. It's all over the planet, and here comes Jesus. <laughs> Those two scriptures now can come to pass. I'm telling you, Jesus is coming. He's coming. You, what else you got? That's all. That's all. That's I just wanted to pray for the nations. Amen. Praise the Lord. And ask him for, to give them to now, us. Think about this. Out of 7.7 .7 billion people, he chose you and chose Mac to do this. They did. And I've you, been praying about it for 40 yeah. years. And you know why? Because he trusts you. Praise See, he trusts the Lord. You. He just trusts you. I believe you, you Jesus. He just trusts you. That's what makes a marriage. That's what makes the gospel. Because if we couldn't trust Jesus, none of us would be Christians. That's right. yeah. So stand to your feet real quickly. In just a minute, I'm going to turn this over to Mac. Before I do that, I'll be sure my face it quickly. I, I want you, when you go home tonight, tell the Lord what you want. Find out what you want, sweetheart. Find it. Do it tonight. You understand, girls? I don't care how young you are, how, how old you are. What you want, not what you need. You already know that. Live as long as you want, sweetheart. You, you can live as long as you want. Death and life's in the power of your tongue and yours, sir. It don't make no difference what anybody else says. Just what do you want? What, what, brother? Think about that for a minute. What, young man? What, what, I mean, it's just that simple. Don't complicate it. Come as a child. Childlike, not childish. Children are born believers until you teach them to doubt. They know nothing of doubt. I got to say this. I'm 72 years old and I don't know nothing about doubt. People think I done lost my mind. I have. I've got the mind of Christ. Now, what you girls want? Come here. Come a little closer to me. I'm not, don't be afraid of me. Come. <laughs> what do you want? Would you like? Can, can I see your jeans, sweetheart? I got to see them. <laughs> do, you, do you want a new pair of jeans? <laughs> I knew I was going to get in trouble. <laughs> Look at her too. You know, and that's fashion. See, my jeans don't have no holes in them. This is not fashionable. That's fashion. The, they have figured out how, how to sell you the stuff they rip apart <laughs> at a higher price. You look wonderful. You look, you look wonderful. <laughs> I just can't get over that. <laughs> my mama, how many of y'all used to have to put patches on your jeans? Not no more, son. They just rip them apart. My God, if the machinery breaks, <laughs> oh, that's $150 for that pair. <laughs> How about the ones that not ripped? Oh, that's 35 bucks. You can have that. <laughs> oh, did I embarrass you, sweetheart? Then why'd you close your coat? <laughs> no, no I, I'm, I'm very blunt, you know what I'm saying? You look wonderful. You look great. Yeah, that's great. I know what she's saying. Shut up. And, and turn the service over to Mac right now. Ladies and gentlemen, your pastor, Mac Hammond. Thank you, man. <laughs>